I said with the Aaron Rodgers things, you can't judge who won the trade because there's different timelines. If we know by Thanksgiving that Jordan Love is Kirk Cousins with some mobility, I think Green Bay is, feels really good about that. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't make the playoffs, you could lose him. You gave up a lot. It could be a mess. So to yeah. me, whoever gets the star in the NBA trade always wins. In the NFL, there's some potholes with the Jets, the ownership, the O-line, young teammates. So I, I just want to see it play out, right? right. Like, I, I think I think Rodgers joining that room, it's the difference between waking up yeah. in a windstorm and bright blue skies. I think the Jets will feel bigger and better as a franchise day one. Your thoughts? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel like I can judge who won the trade. I think the Packers did an exceptional job. I think that no matter what happens with Jordan Love, the Aaron Rodgers era was over. He was a declining player who was showing less and less interest in doing the things that you would need to do as a Packer with those young receivers to take the next step. And I think they got 120 cents on the dollar for a 40-year-old, wildly expensive, unreliable in the offseason player. What they got in this trade was they moved up two spots in the first round from 15 to 13. That by itself would cost you probably about a third-round pick. So call that they got a third-round pick. They got the number 42 overall pick, and next year they will get the Jets' first-round pick unless something catastrophic happens, in which case they definitely won the trade. So I think the Packers did as well as they could have done, given the fact that everyone said, oh, they have no leverage. That's not how it looks to me. They got a first rounder next year, the number 42 pick, and moved up two spots in this year's draft, and they clean up their cap after this coming season. And if you're the Jets, I totally get why you did it. Yeah. You have not had consecutive seasons of high-level quarterbacking since Joe Namath. Vinny right. Testaverde had a great year, popped his Achilles. Chad Pennington had the surprising year. Brett Favre had a good three months. Last year, Colin, there were 33 quarterbacks in the league that threw 175 passes or more. The 33rd, 32nd, and 31st ranked by passer rating were the three New York Jets quarterbacks. They had the three worst quarterbacks in football. So I get why they did it. But I, I would be very nervous if I were them. Yeah. And I'd be very nervous about how engaged and committed Rodgers yeah. is going to be. And if he walks after a year, that is a hefty price to try to squeeze into the seventh and final wild card spot, which I think is about where this is headed. Yeah, I'd never forget Aaron said I'm 90% into retirement. Like, that's just being yeah. overlooked now. So you're, you're not getting a guy in his prime if I was 90% into my retirement and I'm not oh. I'm not close to it, and I'm not close to 50%, if I was 90%, you're not getting a fully engaged me. I'm I'm looking at golf courses every time I drive down the freeway. No no, two points on that. One is that's what Fox told me 6 years ago when they made me move to LA. They're like cowards 90% into retirement. And then you just kept signing new contracts, they shipped me out to New York. They're like you're never you're, he's never going to leave. Yeah. Um but the more importantly than that is even if Rodgers wants to keep playing, Colin, what Tom Brady did to our perception of what a 40-year-old quarterback is, it's similar to what, you know who's going to pay a big penalty for what we are seeing from LeBron James? All of the next generation of stars when they get older. Yeah. When they're in year 16 or 17 and we're like, why aren't they still awesome? LeBron was great in year 20. The, Brady and LeBron are not the standard. They are the outlier. And so all of NFL history tells us the Jets will be very lucky to get one outstanding season yeah. out of a 40-year-old quarterback. Yeah. So I just think it, it's a gamble. I get. Listen, I'm a gambler. I get why they did it. You couldn't run it back with Zach Wilson. Mike White's not an NFL starter. I understand that. But it is far from a sure thing. Uh, you know, I said um, to start my show today, the Lakers gave you a little bit of – Everything they are, good and bad, last night. D'Angelo Russell hit shots, but he was a minus 16. AD got hurt and left for a while. Dennis Schroeder makes turnovers that make no sense being in the league this long. Austin Reeves is fun, but limited, and LeBron put on a cape. It was really everything you get from the Lakers. Um, I don't see them as winning the West. I, 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 think, I think it just shows... LeBron James, there's an interesting stat. The Lakers are 18th in first quarter, scoring first in the fourth. And what that tells you is LeBron starts every game the same way. 
He lets the game come to him. He is hoping teammates allow him to just conserve his energy. They don't. So he's got to take over in the second quarter and then in the fourth. I think LeBron's wanted to hand this baton to AD for three years. And it's still, sure. he can't last night. So I don't see him winning the sure. West. Do you feel differently this morning than you did two, uh, 10 days ago on them winning the West? Well, no, not drastically. I would have if they lost. It would have been a devastating loss. They, the Grizzlies were, you know, barely fighting in that first yeah. half. And then they let them back in the game the final two minutes of the first half. Then it looked like it was going to get away from them. And then LeBron James, who did not have it last night. He didn't. LeBron James, who could not hit a shot. LeBron James, who looked gassed. LeBron James, who was begging one of his teammates to step up. And credit to D'Angelo Russell because he did. And he hit three straight threes and got him right back in that game. LeBron James then did LeBron James things. And that is why... That I don't think there is a team in the West you can say definitively you should have more confidence in. Denver, who is not playoff tested, and Denver played LeBron and Anthony Davis in a series and it was a rout. Phoenix, who is already right now first in playoff minutes, Durant. Second yeah. in playoff minutes, Booker. Ninth in playoff minutes, Chris Paul. Dead last in bench scoring these playoffs, the Phoenix Suns, to get past a team without its two best players. Golden State or Sacramento. Sacramento's best player is now hurt. Golden State is very fortunate to not be 3-1 down in that series and already dead. And then you have the Lakers, who, yes, they are a flawed team. But in a close game late, there is not a player since Michael Jordan you would rather have. And I want to throw a stat at you, Colin, okay. that I was going to save for my show. But, <laughs> you know, you've been pretty good to me over the years, so <laughs> okay. I'll do it here. So LeBron James, you know, not that clutch, afraid of the last shot. We've been hearing it for 20 years. In his career, in the final second of playoff games in the fourth quarter of overtime to tie or take the lead is 7 of 12. Every other league MVP the last 25 years in their careers are a combined 6 of 45. Wow. I'm going to say that again. LeBron James in the last second of playoff games, tie or take the lead. He is 7 of 12. That is 58%. Every other guy that's won MVP in the last 25 years, Shaq, Kobe, Steph, Giannis, Harden, Westbrook, Pitt, Nash, Duncan, Garnett, Dirk, all of them, 6 of 45. He is the most clutch player, oh, Kobe including that as well, by the way. Kobe, two of eight, I believe. He is the most clutch player that we have seen in this league since Jordan, and he and Jordan are head and shoulders over everyone else. And because of that, plus, on the nights Anthony Davis is good, they do look like the best team in basketball, oh. and we don't know what's going to come out of the East with the Bucks floundering the way oh. they are and the Sixers and Celtics about to have a war. Listen, I told you that uh, J Max the gambler. I tr I gave you the Lakers at fifty to one to win the title. Right now, this morning, they're fourteen to one. That's what we call value, Colin. <laughs> J Max knows all about that. You, you know, hedge outside of it if you wanted it. You tripled your money without having to do anything. I feel pretty good about the Lakers this morning. Okay, so I saw news yesterday, and I knew it just bummed you out. Um, De'Aaron Fox injured, and I knew you're like. Could they get another break? And I'm like, another yeah. break. Okay. By the way, Bogut hurt. Festus Azili. They fell apart Bogut, against. Bogut, Festus Azili. You're bringing up Bogut. <laughs> this is De'Aaron Fox lighting him on fire. You're bringing up Andrew Bogut. Let's go through the history, Colin. All right. 2015. Kevin Love gets his shoulder ripped out by wow. Kelly Olynyk. I'm still mad about that, but who cares? Wow. LeBron and the Cavs are going to win anyway. Yeah. Kyrie Irving breaks his kneecap. Ring number one. Yeah. 2017, Kawhi Leonard lighting them up, up 22 points. Game one of the Western Conference Finals. Zaza puts his clown shoes beneath him. <laughs> Never see Kawhi again. Ring number two. 2018, 65 win Rockets. Have them down 3-2 in the series with home court advantage. Yeah. Chris Paul pulls his hamstring. Ring number three, 2022. The, oh, my goodness, the Memphis Grizzlies, tough matchup. They can't guard Ja. It's a 2-1 series. Ja out for the series. Ring number four. <laughs> and now De'Aaron Fox yeah. breaks his finger, and he might not play. Now, I understand Warriors fans 
2019 injuries cost you a championship. They did. You would have won that title if not for that. But that's one. It was four, where the, your, your biggest competition loses either its best or second best player. And, I, yeah, so and I'm sad for De'Aaron Fox. Like, you know this. I don't know if the audience knows this. Fox played in the same AAU circuit in Houston as my son. I've watched this kid. I watched him score 41 points in the first half of a running clock AAU game eight years ago. I watched him at Kentucky. I watched him get drafted by Sacramento, and people swear, good stats, bad team guy. All the smart basketball people last year killed the Kings for trading Tyrese Halliburton for DeMontis Sabonis, saying, oh, you're really going to give the keys to the car to De'Aaron Fox? And all he did this year was hit every clutch shot, win clutch player of the year, and be the best Sacramento King player since Chris Webber. And it is a damn shame oh, if he is minimized in this series. It makes me sad. Yeah. Well, you know what? Know. A lot of those guys that got hurt, John Morant, Chris Paul, Kawhi Leonard, they always get hurt. But, you know, that's another show. Yeah. Those guys always get hurt. Don't yeah, blame no, the that, Warriors because they're deep and well no, coached. That's tr- I'm not blaming them. <laughs> I'm just saying there are certain guys, and they seem to be your favorites, that just their whole sports life is just littered with <laughs> dancing through the raindrops and everything. Hey, Tom Brady, nobody's heard of you. We're going to create a tuck rule for you. There's, oh, there's going to be a helmet catch that you got that uh, goes against you. But we promise we'll make the helmet catch up to you when your own guy, Julian Edelman, does his own version of it a decade later. It's so frustrating. Uh. All of it's so frustrating, and it's always your guys at the expense <laughs> of my guys. I'm not laughing at you. It's 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 kind of you at are. you, but a little with you. Listen, you listen. You your chief, your Chiefs are winning, uh, so I'm you. You uh-huh. got a lot of good things going on in your life. You have an amazing yeah. family. You're all worked out. I hope you didn't Thank spend you. all your energy. You saved some for the fourth, like LeBron. You used a lot of energy there, Nick. No, I'm going to be fine. Here's the thing. My dear co-host, Kevin Wilds, who I adore so much, secret sauce to the show, he mocked me on television yesterday because we the De'Aaron Fox news came down and I was despondent. <laughs> and he was like, you're pouting. We have to do a show. And I said on the air, you know, the th- same thing I told you, which is, you know, the history I have with this young man. Yeah. Sacramento, obviously, is where my wife's family's from. Yeah. Also, the team initially was in Kansas City. I love this team. But I'm going to tell you something else. Colin, I know this will shock you. I have a significant financial investment (laughs) in the Kings beating the Warriors in this series. Yeah. And Harrison Barnes' missed shot combined with De'Aaron Fox's broken finger is disastrous for me. Yeah. And I had to deal with that in real time. And now you're cackling. Now you're just laughing. Yeah. You and Draymond are going to do a <laughs> FaceTime about this later at my expense. And I don't like it. Well... You know, there's Uber. If you have to sell off your cars and your condo, there, you know, you can okay. you can lift an okay. Uber to work. Good luck to you, you know, and your family going oh, forward. I thought you were going to say I can drive for Uber, <laughs> pick up some extra cash on the side. It's not great, buddy. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Nick Wright, co-host, first things first. Now, I saw that news yesterday with De'Aaron Fox. I'm like, oh, God, Nick is going to be despondent. But you know what? Warriors didn't have Draymond or Gary Payton. It's the breaks. Go win games. Overcome. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.